Good evening. I'm Officer Bill Hummel, a spokesperson for the Aurora Police Department. Uh, the reason that I've invited and we've invited everybody here today is to discuss an ongoing case. It's an ongoing investigation involving uh, allegations of uh, sexual assault on children, wherein the suspect is a teacher at a middle school here in Aurora. Joining me today is Chief Nicholas Metz with the uh, Aurora Police Department and Cherry Creek School Superintendent Dr. Harry Bull, B-U-L-L, and our Major Investigation Lieutenant Steve Redfern, who also oversees the Crimes Against Children Unit. Uh, I'll start out with Chief Metz. Thank you, Bill. It's okay, I'm just going to move these over just a little bit so I can put my papers down. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Uh, again, my, I'm Nick Metz. I'm the Chief of Police with the Aurora Police Department. And first of all, I just want to thank all of you for uh, coming here this evening on such little notice. This is a very important case and one in which we're actually um, asking for the media's help in getting information out. So we really appreciate you coming in here, coming here today. Uh, one of the things I want to start off with is to just to share with you that the information that we are providing today is preliminary in nature. Uh, so it is any investigation It's always subject to change. And so that's one thing I just want you to keep in mind. And also it's an active investigation, meaning that there's probably going to be a lot of things at this point we can't share with you as far as specifics. And so we're going to just ask for your understanding with that. Once we can, once we have that information, once we get that, uh, as you know, as the course goes and working with the prosecutor's office and things like that, uh, we will, we will re release that information as we can. I think one thing that's really important to note here is we are not holding this press conference just to tell you that we made an arrest. Uh, the important part of this press conference is that, again, we need your help. We need your help in getting information out because we believe that there may be additional victims uh, either at the current school of where this teacher uh, is employed or past uh, schools where he was previously employed. So again, this is something that we feel is very important. So let me just start off with, uh, oh, and also I just want to also state that uh, we do have, we've been in consultation not only with um, Superintendent Harry Bull from the Cherry Creek School District, who's here with us, but also with uh, the 18th Judicial District, District Attorney's Office, uh, and just to make sure that uh, things are going the way they need to go. Uh, so basically, uh, just to start from the beginning, um, officers were dispatched to um, our lobby downstairs to investigate a sexual assault. The sexual assault involved a, uh, the victim of, was a minor. The suspect in the case is Brian Vasquez. Uh, this is a photo of him right here. Mr. Vasquez uh, is a teacher at Prairie Middle School, which is part of the Cherry Creek School District. Uh, the victims in this case, and again, we believe there are multiple victims, uh, are students at uh, at uh, Prairie Middle School, um, but again, uh, we believe that there may be more. Uh, Mr. Vasquez was arrested by officers this afternoon, and he was booked into the Aurora Jail on three counts of sex assault on a child with a position of trust, which is a pattern of abuse charging enhancer, and five counts of sexual exploitation of a child. One of the things that's important to note here is the charge is merely an accusation and that the defendant is presumed innocent until and unless proven guilty. As I said earlier, we believe or we do know that uh, Mr. Vasquez has had previous employment uh, prior to working for the Cherry Creek School District. Uh, that employment included um, employment with the Widefield uh, School District. Um, which is, we believe, is in El Paso County, and the Harrison School District, also in El Paso County. That said, we are in the process of contacting not only the Colorado Springs Police Department, but also the El Paso County Sheriff's Office and others that we believe uh, may need to know this information to determine whether or not uh, there may be additional victims uh, prior to his employment here in Aurora. He also was a uh, employed with the San Luis Valley Youth Detention Center, and we are in the process of notifying them as well. Mr. Vasquez is married and he has two young children. Uh, um, and again, we are very concerned about the possibility of, of uh, additional victims. So the reason, one of the biggest reasons we want to make sure we have this press conference today is to get the word out that if someone believes that they have been a victim 
uh, by Mr. Vasquez, if they are a witness or they have any information that they believe uh, may tie him to any uh, previous um, sexual assault incidents or anything that we're investigating now, we are asking them to please contact the Crimes Against Children tip line. That number is 303-739-6164. We are in the process of providing victim advocates to the victims and their families, uh, and we are going to continue to do that as this investigation continues. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Harry Bull, Superintendent of the Cherry Creek School District. Thank you, Nick. Well, good evening. This morning, we received information from the Aurora Police Department regarding allegations of inappropriate sexual behavior by a teacher, Mr. Vasquez a teacher of seven years at Prairie Middle School. Working cooperatively with the Aurora Police Department, the Cherry Creek School District immediately placed the teacher on paid administrative leave. Today is a sad day. It's a sad day at Prairie Middle School, at Overland High School, and at the Cherry Creek School District. The district has and will continue to cooperate fully with the Aurora Police Department. Our greatest concern my greatest concern is for our students. Some we believe may be victims or may have information important to this investigation. I encourage anyone, any of our students who have information to please let an adult in your school know. Our teachers, our counselors, and our mental health staff will be available to support our students and their families who need assistance. The parents of the Prairie and Overland community will also be contacted and notified of this incident this evening by the Cherry Creek Schools. I'd like to now welcome to the podium, Lieutenant Redfern. Can we have a proper name spelling of the, the suspect? Yeah, Brian. Yeah. Okay, so again, I'm Lieutenant Steve Redfern with the Major Investigation Section. Um, to answer your last question, Brian, I have is B-R-I-A-N, last name Vasquez, V-A-S-Q-U-E-Z. Um, real quickly, I'm sorry, Red Fern. It's R-E-D-F-E-A-R-N. And again, I'm a lieutenant with the Aurora Major Investigation Section. Um, I'm here just to follow up a little bit on some of the Chief's comments uh, from the investigative side. Um, our detectives today uh, have been working very tirelessly on this urgent matter. We've been able to uh, conduct some interviews um, with some victims and witnesses, but we have many more to do, and that's why some of the questions that you likely have we're not going to have the answers to or not be able to talk about today. Um, a few next steps with this, which clearly is an ongoing um, and very uh, rapidly evolving case. Uh, we have more interviews to do, and we will continue to do those. Um, we have been working hand-in-hand uh, -hand with the Cherry Creek School District today, um, tomorrow, at the school, we will have additional officers there from our school resource officer unit and some detectives there um, in case we do have additional witnesses or folks with information. Um, our partners with the Arapahoe County DA's office have been in contact with uh, our detectives all day, and we will continue to work with uh, those folks um, on charging in this case. Typically, it takes uh, around 72 hours or a decision is made on charging within 72 hours of, of an arrest. Um, we, as the chief said, we think it's likely that there could be additional victims um, out there, but we also think there might be folks that have information. And so I'm going to repeat the tip line number. The tip line for our Crimes Against Children unit is 303-739-6164. And again, anyone with information, victim, witnesses, anybody that might have some pertinent information, please call us at that number and uh, detectives will be monitoring that. Um, that is really it for next steps. Uh, again, as we have more information in the coming days, we'll release it. But at, at, at this time, preliminarily, that's um, that's where we stand here. Um, we'll take some questions at this time. Again, keep in mind there's there's a lot of things at this time we're not able to discuss. Talk about the connection to Overland High School and maybe uh, the range of ages for the victims or middle school and high school. I can't at this time speak to the range range of range of ages of the victims. I will say that uh, proximity wise, prayer. Uh, Prairie and Overland are literally on the same campus, so um, there's likely to be some students now at Overland that attended Prairie and things like that. Are the incidents isolated to school hours or outside of school hours or both? It's too early for us to tell. There, as we speak, detectives are still narrowing down a lot of the details. Are all of the victims students? Right 
I'm sorry? Are all of the victims students, and how many victims have you know of At this time, we're not naming the number. It's multiple victims, and we believe that at the information that we have at this time that the, the victims we're referring to now were students at the school when these incidents occurred. How did you guys first find out about this? Um, as the chief stated, we had a uh, walk-in uh, report to our front desk. Um, one of the victims arrived here, and a patrol officer made contact and took this report, and then um, we took it from there. How long do you think it's been going on? We don't know. Um, it's it, it's likely uh, likely that's been going on for for quite some time, but we don't have a, a time frame at this point. Can you differentiate, forgive me for not knowing, the three counts of sexual assault and five counts of sexual exploitation? Can you kind of describe the differences there? Um, for the purposes of this uh, briefing, I'm I'm going to refrain from doing that because I don't want to give misinformation. I don't have the I, I can give you general descriptions, but uh, at this point, I don't want to I don't want to go down that road. We can follow up later with that. On those eight counts, how many victims are are named in, in just those eight so far? Again, at this point, due to the the very early nature of this, I'm not going to delineate what victims are associated with what charges at this point. That's something that will come out at a later time. When you say exploitation, can you could that possibly be child porn, trying to get kids to create child porn? Can you Again, I don't want to go I don't want to, to to provide the whole statute for you. All of those things are in public records and things like that. We can get into that at a later time, but um, I don't want to I mainly don't want to go through those things right now because I don't want to alarm folks and and and, and potentially harm for their witnesses or victims of the okay. talk. I, I, sure. I think one of the things to keep in mind, and this is an incredibly high priority investigation for us. Uh, we, as soon as we got the information, we've been on it. Uh, we're going to continue to work on it uh, through, through the next coming days. Um, it is really important right now that we not share this information because we do not want to do anything to jeopardize this investigation. Uh, so, you know, I appreciate the questions, but please understand that a lot of these things we cannot answer right now, again, to maintain the integrity of the investigation. For the superintendent, did you know, if you could step here so we can hear you, did you know uh, the teacher? And if so, can you kind of describe what, what, what you knew about him, what any relation? You know what, other than um, recognizing the picture, I, I've had no relationship with the teacher. What did he teach? He's a social studies teacher. Do you believe he acted alone? Uh, you know what, I'm going to let the police investigate and provide that information uh, later on. What Is information he, has the school district given parents so far? Um, we are sending out a message uh, explaining to our parents really the essence of this press conference. Uh, we released that information after this uh, press conference started. So it went out today, 6 o'clock. We translated and are sending it out to both the Overland and uh, Prairie community. When did school start this year? Um, at those two schools a week ago. Was he involved in any extra curricular activities? Was he a coach, sponsor, or anything like that? Uh, my understanding is is that he was a coach of Destination Imagination. What's that? What is that? Uh, Destination Imagination, as you can uh, envision in the title, it's a group of kids to get together and, and uh, work creatively to, prob sol to problem solve. Uh, questions that come to them, uh, challenges that come to them that they're not expecting, and and then they are judged by their uh, creativity and problem-solving ability. Is this an after-school program? Yes. Did, were there any complaints or any issues in the seven years that he taught there that maybe were not criminal, but issues at the school? None that I'm aware of. None that I'm aware of. Did he have any sort of history that led up to this? Uh, the information that we have from previous employers would suggest that there were no concerns at the time of employment. What should parents know now? What would you want parents to know now at this juncture? Well, I, you know, I want parents to know that we're working cooperatively with the police department. Uh, Chief Metz and I have had numerous conversations today, and, and as he said, this is a high priority for both the Aurora Police Department and the Cherry Creek School District. Um, I'm as shocked as all of you are. Uh, none of us had any inklings of anything, and, and we're trying to be very responsive. Uh, again, my comments, I, I'm more concerned about if there are any other victims out there. And I, uh, I'm so appreciative of all of you being here in support of the effort to see if, in fact, there are others. And again, I, I commit the resources of the Cherry Creek School District to, uh, to support our families and to support any of our students that, that may have been victim, victimized in this situation. It, what grades did he teach, and was that after school program both high school and middle school? Uh, the grades would be middle school, so in our in our configuration, it's grades six, seven, and eight, and the program would have been at the middle level. 
So he could have taught, he may have taught all three, or he did. Uh, you know what, I don't have that information. I'm not sure exactly what he taught other than social studies. Chief, I know you said that you can't really speak uh, a lot about this case, but uh, as long as I've been here, we haven't had anything like this. You guys have made the point several times that you're trying to get this information out there. What leads you to believe that there are more victims? Well, again, we mentioned earlier that he has previous employment with schools. Uh, so we want to make sure that if there are past victims out there, that they're getting the assistance they need. If there are people who have information uh, regarding uh, alleged abuse or of any kind, that we want to know about that. Uh, and again, it's mainly to um, also make sure that anybody who has potentially or, or allegedly been a past victim is getting the assistance that they need. Where was he arrested? Sure. Uh, he was actually arrested at the school today at Prairie. What time? Uh, early afternoon. I, I'm not sure the exact time, but it was early afternoon today. Yeah. We're still in class? I, I'm not sure about that. We're going to not take any more questions at this time. Um, we hope to get some more information out um, to the public as it becomes available. Just please understand, as the chief and the lieutenant said, we're trying diligently uh, to, to put this case together, and we really want to protect the information in it. So thank you all Can for coming. Can we get your first and last name? Yep, I'm Bill, B-I-L-L, -L, Hummel, H-U-M-M-E-L. Is there an arrest affidavit or anything like that? Or is that going to be sealed? Not at this point. That's something that we'll refer you to the uh, Rappel County District Attorney on. What's his age? Um, I believe 33. Is he the DOP? Yes. His date of birth is April 15th of 1983. It's, I'm sorry, so April 15th? Yep, April 15th, 1983. And when the, the walk, the person who walked in, when did that happen? Was it a month ago? Was it a couple months ago? The, when it was initially reported? Yeah. It was just a couple days ago. A couple days ago. Yeah, the evening of the 20th. The evening of? Um, the August 20th. 20th. Yep, and uh, we are going to have a press release out uh, hopefully within the hour, so that will have details as to dates, times, correct spellings of names and whatnot. And when he was arrested, was there any incident or did he go? No. There's no incident? No. Okay, just, no more. So just to check one thing, I believe this is what you said, he's married and has two children? Yes. That's yeah, that's right. Yes. Okay, thank you all for coming. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.